delusion. And uh, uh, we have sought uh, to witness against uh, these things. Now we have also sought, as I have indicated, uh, to witness against the advance of Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism uh, is uh, a system of uh, error that thrives on ignorance. It thrives on the ignorance of the scriptures. Recently, a committee, I discovered that the people of Scotland were very ignorant of Christianity. That was a well-known fact 25 or 30 years ago. But the committee did not pursue its investigations as to why uh, the people of Scotland are ignorant of Christianity and uh, because the simple fact is uh, that the people in the pew are ignorant because of the crass ignorance in the pulpit. And uh, therefore there is no witness raised uh, against uh, uh, Roman uh, Catholicism. And down through the hundred years, and no one can deny us, down through the hundred years, uh, which are now coming to an end today, uh, this has been part and an integral part of our witness because we are not ashamed of being called Protestants. Well, we don't believe in people who say, oh, we are Reformed, but we're not Protestant. Anybody who knows anything about theology knows very well uh, that uh, Reformed uh, theology is Protestant theology. Uh, and that the Reformers like Luther uh, and Calvin and Knox uh, and others, uh, they were Protestants. Now it's only right and proper that the free Presbyterian Church should be tested eh, with regard to its witness against Roman Catholicism. It's one thing to witness. It's another thing to be tested eh, with regard to that witness. And let us be quite clear. If we are Christians and if we are in the Christian Church, we are witnessing about anything, we have, will have our witness tested. And uh, this took place. It took place when we were astonished to discover that one of our ministers did not see anything wrong eh, with uh, asking a Roman Catholic priest to pray. And what was worse was that there were people in the church did not see anything wrong in that either. Now, we were tested with regard to that. Others would have liked. Oh, yes, others would have liked. If we just passed some resolution saying we disapprove of it and not exercise church discipline. But grace was given to exercise church discipline. And whatever the world may say, whatever graceless professors may say, the fact is eh, that it was from grace the strength came to exercise a church discipline on that minister. But the wine of astonishment was not finished. For we then discovered one of our elders, who held a very high position in the land, the Lord Chancellor, did not see anything wrong with going to a mass. Again, people would have liked. Oh, they would have liked. If we had just passed a resolution saying, well, we disapprove of this. But the key question was, will the exercise discipline? You would be surprised, you would be surprised at the number of people whose minds were exercised about that outside the church altogether. Some of them inside the legal profession. But grace was given to exercise a discipline. Grace was given to exercise discipline. And I remember very well when he appeared before our presbytery. And when the motion was moved eh, to discipline, I very well remember that night, if ever I slept with the sleep of God and my with the peace of God in my conscience, it was that night. And the same thing happened to the sinner. Grace was given eh, to be firm and uh, to, uh, to uh, discipline uh, uh, the, the man who did not see anything wrong with going to masses. Now, 
He says, Miss Lord Mackay withdrew himself from the pastoral care of our church. He may not think so, but that is to his loss. But he didn't do so. But since he didn't do so, we are informed by the Churchman's Magazine that in February there was an Ash Wednesday's Mass held in the crypt chapel of the House of Commons for the first time since the Reformation. Now, you see, that's the way the Pope is trying to, to, to creep in. Well, the Lord Chancellor and the Speaker of the House of Commons gave joint approval for the Ash Wednesday Mass. Now, as I say, you see, the church was tested with regard to that. And I believe, and whatever others may say, and especially others outside, uh, that uh, there was grace, there was strength that was given uh, to carry that through and all the vilification and all the misrepresentation uh, that took place was willingly borne by us for the, for the uh, for, uh, our master has said, Blessed are ye when men shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake rejoice and be exceeding glad. For so persecuted they the prophets before you. Now this test was one that others did not pass. That others did not pass. And they left. And formed what goes under the name of the APC organization. And that was a purging of our church. I was asked today by the press, was I, did I not consider it a disaster, what happened in 1989? And my answer was, certainly not. But we were purged of people who have no real part or not in the Free Presbyterian Testimony. And if we will remain and get grace to remain in that way, acting, according to the word of God in the testimony, we may expect that the Lord will preserve and keep our church and uphold us in the midst of all the darkness that surrounds us. Now, one last point I just want to make, and that is this. In 1905, 1917-18, Ministers left the church. Very few people went. Very few. But in, 19, uh, in, in uh, 1939, 1938, when the Reverend Hugh McQueen left, uh, he did not go into the free church. See, when the East Minister went into the free church, free Presbyterians didn't need to be told the difference between the two churches, and therefore they wouldn't go. But here was a, a new situation. A new situation. Uh, that uh, a man, instead of going into the free church, he formed a, a congregation of his own. And therefore, people lost sight. Now, this is important. That's why I'm mentioning it. People lost sight of the threefold testimony of the church. They were just hearing the same minister preach. The courts of the church and all that was lost sight of. And some other people went away. But that was systematic, <laughs> and it came to nothing. It is finished. The same thing happened in Glasgow when Reverend Roderick Mackenzie left, and many people left with him, because he did not go to the free church, and he would not have gone, eh, but set up his own building, you see, and people are misled by that kind of thing. They think they're just in the same place because they've lost the view of the full orb testimony of the church, and that's why it's so important that we grasp that. The same thing has happened uh, in, uh, in 1889. Uh, now, a few have come back uh, from the McQueen movement and the, and the Mackenzie movement, but the great majority have gone elsewhere. The Free Church, the Reformed Presbyterian Church, the Church of Scotland, and even the Baptists. And they've gone into oblivion, and that's what will happen with the schism uh, in 18, uh, that took place in 1989 also. So let us 